Am I the jerk for threatening to tell the truth about what my sibling has been doing behind our aunt's back? I, a 19-year-old female, have a younger sister who is 17 years old and a little cousin who is 9 years old. Back in 2020 my sister had an idea. She was going to publish songs under a fake child music artist, using our younger cousin's likeness, who at that time was only 5 years old. From what she told me, she got the idea while making songs about the video game Roblox with her online friends. They thought it would be funny to publish them as if they were being sung by an actual child, since Roblox is a game primarily used by children. Originally she was just going to pitch her voice up and release one song on YouTube. However, this little joke quickly ballooned into a full rap album. She was very insistent on having this seem as realistic as possible. She decided to put our little cousin on the album cover to make it seem like she was the one singing it. She used a fake name but still used pictures of our cousin in the album art. She never got permission from our aunt, the mother of the cousin, for any of this. She told me all of this, and at the time, I even helped her with designing some of the album art. I didn't think much of it because I thought that the music was only going to be confined to her friend group and wasn't going to get any reach elsewhere. She posted the album on Spotify and YouTube under a fake name, with her sped up vocals, but the album cover had real pictures of our little cousin. A couple of months had passed and I started to get multiple messages from my sister saying that the album had gone viral. At first, I felt excited that this happened, but it soon quickly turned into dread because our aunt might now learn about this. When I looked back at the YouTube and Spotify channels, the songs were getting more than 100,000 streams, views, so not mega viral, but still viral. My sister then wanted to release more albums to ride off this success and ended up releasing two more. At the end of 2021, she finally stopped, apparently having a falling out with her original friend group where this joke was created. Flash forward to now, our cousin is nine years old. My aunt said that she is going to run an Instagram account for our cousin so that she can follow her friends and post photos. Now, I am starting to have an anxiety attack because pictures of our cousin may now be identified as the child artist who went semi-viral four years ago. If our aunt finds out, we're both toast. I talked to my sister about this, and she says people have forgotten all about it. I said that she needs to come clean about this now because I don't want to be caught up in a web of lies when our aunt eventually finds out. She refused, so I said that if she won't tell her, then I will, and if I do, I will say how it was her idea. At this point, she started to get pissed off at me. I'll admit that I said that more as a bluff, but am I in the wrong for wanting to tell the truth to our aunt? Am I the asshole? She posted the album on Spotify and YouTube, and now your cousin is a target for internet sickos. You put her child at risk, and now it's time to come clean. Apologize and move on and tell your aunt so she can better protect her baby. What you and your sister did was ignorant, stupid and dangerous. Am I the jerk for telling my stepdad to respect me? I am a 17-year-old male. My stepfather, who is 60 years old, is very religious and conservative when it comes to tradition. While we have opposite views, this never really got in the way of our relationship. We were not super close yet we also were not enemies. It was not until last night when my stepsister, let's call her M, who is 30 years old, came over to visit. M and my stepfather somehow got into an argument about politics. He was always talking and complaining about politics, so I was used to this. After a bit, I decided to join in and just listen. They would then ask me questions and I would have my input, which was always the opposite of what my stepfather thought. This went on for about an hour or two before things became personal. My stepfather admitted he believes I will be going to hell if I do not accept Jesus Christ as my savior and for being transgender and openly gay. I told him that I do not believe in God. That turned into a whole other new thing since he never knew until then. He was saying how his point of view on religion is the true answer and how if I want to make it to heaven, I need to repent more or less. I asked him how can I if I do not believe in heaven or hell. I questioned why it should affect his relationship with me just because I am not religious. I told him all I ever wanted was for him to respect my choices. I made it clear this does not mean he has to like it, just to respect it. He then said, oh well I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't accept God. I was dumbfounded. I told him this is why I do not go to him for much, of which he then began to blame my biological mother, saying how I never touched a church in my life. I grew up Catholic, went to a child's Catholic Sunday school and worked at a Catholic church for kids. After all of that, he left the room in silence after I kept telling him how it should not matter if he agrees with me on this or not, and he should just respect it. It is the next day, and I now cannot help but feel bad. Did I go too far? For context, I had been out for four years now and I knew his views on my lifestyle. He always fought with my mom about it saying how I am going to hell and my mom should not be okay with that. I have also found search results of him asking Google if God approves of transgender people and such. It's important to stand firm and ask for respect for one's beliefs, especially when they're not harming anyone. Quoting Matthew 7 could be a powerful way to illustrate how judging others can come back around. 
The stepfather's insistence on his viewpoint being the only true answer is a classic example of ignoring the plank in your own eye. In the end, focusing on personal growth and what feels right for oneself is the best path forward. Am I the jerk for not paying for my child's college housing and campus fees next year because they misled me about their summer classes? My daughter, who is 19 years old, is taking three online summer classes. Back in April, she told me that all her classes would be in person, so I paid for her summer housing and meal plan so she could live on campus. I didn't think much of it at the time because I trusted her. Two of them are general education classes, specifically English and physics, and one is a major specific class. I figured that she would want to get her general education requirements out of the way, and I'm sure the major specific class is important for her major. However, I just found out that her classes are actually all online. There is a third-party website that has information about classes each semester at her college. I was just scrolling through it out of curiosity and happened to see her classes are all online, with no in-person component. I was very shocked about how I was misled for the last two or three months. I know that she really likes campus life, but things do tend to tone down over the summer. She probably is aware of the campus housing fees and whatnot. This means I spent a good amount of money on housing and meal plans that she didn't actually need. I'm paying for her education out of her college savings, which we've been saving for many years, and I want to teach her the value of money and the importance of honesty. I was on the phone with her and I told her I decided that I'm not paying for her housing or any of her campus fees next year. I emphasize that she needs to understand that there are consequences to her actions. She is really upset and says that I'm being too harsh. She claims that in April the classes were listed as in-person, but they moved to virtual at the very last minute, after the deadline for housing withdrawal and refund. I don't know if this is actually true since I never bothered to check the class listings at that time, and I didn't see a reason she would lie about it. I told her I'm very skeptical that they would move all classes online at the very last minute because it would certainly disrupt some people's plans, especially those who lease off campus. My wife said that what I told her was way too harsh and that unexpected things do happen. You've acted like a jerk here. This is money already saved and earmarked for college, and she used it for its intended purpose. She should have communicated her plans, but taking away her housing for the fall semester is a cruel power move. No wonder she picked summer school over coming home if this is the way you, parent. Am I the jerk for not taking care of my ex's son anymore? Five years ago, my ex-girlfriend and I split up. She has a son from a previous relationship, and he was roughly nine months old when we met. We dated for quite some time, had a daughter, she cheated, and we split. We decided custody out of court at the time. It would be one week with me and one week with her. However, she told me I could not have my daughter if I did not also take her son and raise him since his biological father is not in the picture. Out of fear of her taking my daughter away, I agreed. I raised him for the most part, but we never really bonded as father and son. A couple of years later, she got married and her husband adopted her son. She continues to expect me to care for him along with my daughter. Recently, she tried to take my daughter from me and I had enough. I called an attorney and got everything ready to fight for set custody that cannot be taken on a whim. I can tell her son does not want to be here. I have asked her several times to sit him down and ask what he wants, but she tells me I should be fighting for him and that I am less of a man for even asking her that. I just cannot do it anymore. I have spent so much time and money on a child that is not mine and with whom I have zero bond. After all this custody stuff dies down, I am completely done with him. I feel as though I should not have done it from the beginning, but especially after her husband adopted him. I feel like that should have been his responsibility from that point on. She is constantly worried about messing him up mentally, but refuses to look at the situation and see that it is not healthy, and tries to blame me for everything that goes wrong. I just want my daughter so I can put all of my effort into her and raise her to be the best person I possibly can. This whole situation has been a mentally exhausting roller coaster for me the last several years. Am I in the wrong for not wanting to continue to care for her son? You are not the bad guy in this situation. She's using you so she can have time off from all parenting, which isn't how it works when you have children with multiple fathers. His biological dad ditches him, your ex shoves you into the role for several years, and now guy hash three is the legal dad, so raising that child is his responsibility, not yours. If your ex won't listen to reason, perhaps her husband will when you suggest family therapy for them. Am I the jerk for dropping off my homeless friend's clothes? So my husband, a 21-year-old male, and I, a 19-year-old female to male transgender person, have a friend or acquaintance, a 20-year-old female, who has been homeless for a couple of months now. We've been holding onto four big trash bags and a laundry bin of her clothes and belongings. She got kicked out of a local homeless shelter because she came back to the shelter 10 minutes after the curfew. She is also pregnant. I'm not 100% sure how far along she is, but it's at least six months by now. She asked us if we could hold onto her clothes for her. I obliged, picked them up with my winter truck, and stored them there. It's well into summer now and I need to park my truck for the season since we live in Alaska, and I have a summer car. I told her I'm parking the truck and asked if she could take her stuff because we need the space in the truck for storage. We live in a really small one-bedroom apartment. She said, I guess come drop it off when you can at your specified street by the side of Home Depot when you can. 
So, my husband and I plan to do that. We called and texted her numerous times on the day of, but got no reply. We put her stuff in my mom's car, and she took us to the specified street to try and find her and drop it off. On the street was a block-length homeless camp with tents, broken down cars and trailers and canopies. I had no idea that this was where she was staying. My mom drove us up and down the street a couple of times, and we didn't see her. My husband was angry that she wasn't answering, and was fed up with her in general. We dropped her stuff off on a corner that was kind of away from everything. My mom drove by that spot a day or two later, texted me and told me that it was all gone. I feel that it was probably other random homeless people who grabbed the bags and not her. They most likely have or have sold all of her clothes and other belongings, and I feel terrible. My mom was in a rush to drop it off, and my husband was angry and wanted to get it over with. I feel really bad because she probably didn't get her clothes, but at the same time, we did exactly what she asked us to do. I met this friend while I was working at Benihana, a little over a year ago. She was one of the few people who was kind to me and treated me with respect. I was treated poorly by most people there, including the managers, because I'm a transgender man. We became friends. During her time there, she met the wrong people and fell into drug addiction. We've let her stay with us twice, I've lent her probably $400, $500, which she has paid back when she was able but hasn't in a long time. We've dropped off food to her and sent her multiple resources and information about homeless shelters that will take pregnant women. She has not attempted to stay at these shelters because she needs to stick with her boyfriend, who is not the baby's father. She has broken up with him before after he stole all her food and left. My husband is convinced that she's still using drugs. The last time we saw her she was very skinny and looked terrible. My husband and best friend helped me set a boundary with her that I could no longer send her money. We could not afford to keep supporting and enabling her. All of the messages and calls that we sent to her to try and contact her when we were dropping off her stuff have been left on read. I feel guilty, like it's my fault that she didn't get her clothes and that they probably got stolen. Am I the asshole in this situation? Your post was removed because it exceeds the 3000 character limit. Please consider resubmitting a shorter post. You cannot continue your post in the comments or another thread. Read the rules in full before attempting to repost to avoid further removal. Am I the jerk for wanting a few hours of peace as a burned out stay at home parent? I am a stay-at-home mother, and I have been coming up with activities and being fully present for my 5-year-old and 6-month-old children. I gave 100% all week and on Saturday, joined my husband on a big hike for a treasure hunt he wanted to do. I was supportive, patient, and present. Today was Sunday, and all week I have been trying to find time to sit down and read about self-improvement and marriage. I have expressed in multiple ways that while I understand my husband works full-time, I want him to be the primary caretaker and do chores on the weekend. He has attention deficit disorder and claims he just does not notice things and will do things if I ask, meaning I point out what needs to be done to keep the house going. I think this should not be my responsibility, but I have tried that, and then he still does not get much done, maybe one or two chores per weekend. After getting home late last night my husband and son were tired. I did not announce to anyone that I was going upstairs for some alone time and to please not bug me for an hour. I did not really think about it, but I probably should have because I am sure most mothers know that someone will need you every 10 minutes, including my husband. The first interruption was him bringing the baby for me to feed. I will do something he cannot do. The second interruption maybe 30 minutes later was my son asking what movie was appropriate on Sunday that he could watch. My husband is very religious, and I guess he wanted to handle this without our input. I stopped what I was doing to search for something for him to watch and came up with Veggie Tales. After a few minutes of showing him options, I said that dad could show him all this downstairs, so he left. A few minutes later, my husband came into the room. I took a deep breath and sighed as I pulled out my headphones to remind myself to be patient and not have an attitude. I asked what he needed, but I guess I still had a tone or expression that upset him. He wanted to know if the content of these shows was good enough for our child to watch alone, without parental guidance. He thought this was important enough to interrupt what I was doing. We had dinner, and he apparently had not let that go. I made dinner, even on the weekend. Our son was being bratty because he was tired, and that is how five-year-olds are. My husband was getting really short with him, which never works because then he just started crying and would not eat his dinner. My husband then seemed to turn his shortness onto me because he said we should have dinner at five, not six. I said nothing but probably made a bit of a face, just thinking about how much effort I put in. It is not like he was making any effort to make dinner by five. He then wanted to have a full-on argument about this. I am just so exhausted from keeping everything together for everyone all the time, and feeling like I have to ask permission to be left alone and trust him to manage as a fully functioning adult parent for an hour or two on a Sunday afternoon. You did the right thing. It's really important that you get some downtime, and physically leaving the house for a few hours could help with that. Your husband should be able to give you a few hours to yourself, and it's not asking too much. Even with a busy schedule, it's essential for both partners to share responsibilities like housework and parenting. Maybe try to find a way to prod your husband into accepting that you need regular breaks. It could make a big difference for your well-being. 
Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.